All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Leopard Banana Ball Python. It's a pretty amazing combination of genes. And if you actually look at all the different genes in ball pythons, every now and then you'll get two of them to come together to make some really visually stunning combinations. And I say probably the best two genes that you can work together out of pretty much all of ball pythons, that is the leopard and the banana. And kind of the cool thing about the leopard banana is you could work almost any other gene into the mix and get some really visually stunning results. Sometimes you make combinations and it looks good with some genes and not the others. And I'd say pretty much across the board, almost anything you work in with the leopard banana, you can make some really amazing combinations. So today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you the amazing potential of the leopard banana ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here at morphmarket.com and I want to start with the leopard and the banana and show you the individual genes and then mix in with some other genes that can make some pretty amazing combinations. And here is the banana. This is what a banana looks like. And I'd say the banana is pretty much the same thing as the coral glow. I actually did a comparison study on the banana and the coral glow and I'm pretty much convinced 100% that they're the same gene. They're the only two genes that are sex linked, meaning if you actually take a male maker banana, you breed it to something else, all the offspring that are bananas come out as males, and you can also have a female maker banana, all the offspring that are bananas come out as females. It's kind of more, one of the more challenging parts of the project, and a lot of times you'll actually buy a banana like this one, and you won't know uh, it's a male maker or a female maker. I actually did that with my Corglo, and I didn't know anything about the gene. I actually just bought the Corglo, and I started breeding it, and then I, I kind of discovered the whole thing about the male maker and the female maker. As a matter of fact, right before my eggs hatched I actually learned about the male makers and the female makers and instead of actually going back and talking to the guy I bought it from I thought all right I'm just gonna let it surprise me and figure out if it's a male maker and sure enough it was actually a male maker every single one that I produced that for the hatchlings they were all males no females at all so sometimes you'll actually see them listed as just a banana it's, you kind of have to ask the breeder where this actually came from or sometimes it'll actually say male maker or female maker and the banana is really visually dominant, meaning if you mix it in with other combinations, it can, a lot of times it'll overwhelm the color of your combination, which in, in some cases it can be pretty challenging. Like if you're working with the albino, it's, I'd say that's even more visually dominant. But let me tell you, if you actually work this into other combinations, you can get some really impressive results, especially for a visually dominant gene. So here's the banana, and if you actually mix that with the leopard, this is what the leopard looks like. And the leopard's can be pretty variable. I've actually seen some that look, you know, kind of have a pattern almost similar to a normal all the way to this extreme pattern enhancing, kind of a jumbled up pattern on this leopard. And it's kind of weird, when I first discovered the leopard it almost seemed like it was more of a pattern enhancer than anything. And come to find out, after I d dug a little bit deeper into the leopard, it's really a dark gene and can darken the background of a lot of combos. And it really does scramble up a lot of patterns. It's, it's a pretty awesome, probably one of the best genes to really mix up the pattern in a lot of your combinations. So here's what happens if you actually take the leopard and you work it in with the banana. Take a look at this crazy thing. I actually just kind of ran into a whole bunch of these leopard banana combinations and I started, you know, I thought, man, these are really awesome. And then I started looking at other genes mixed into it. And let me tell you, I haven't seen one gene that didn't make a really visually stunning combination working any other gene into the leopard banana. And just take a look at this. It really has the strong color from the banana, but you can definitely tell the leopard darkens the dark part of the snake because the leopard is dark. And you can really tell it, the leopard really jumbles up the pattern. And take a look at the head pattern on this one. Really crazy combination. This is a really amazing snake. So I actually wanted to show you some of these other genes, working other genes into the leopard banana. It's pretty amazing. And probably one of the best ones right off the bat is the spot nose. And the spot nose can kind of tricky if you actually look at it as a standalone gene. Sometimes it can almost look like a normal ball python. But let me tell you, when you work spot nose into combinations, it really jumbles up the pattern, especially if you mix it with leopard. Both of them really enhance the pattern. And when you actually work them both together, it can really explode the pattern. And usually if you actually, you know, if you breed something and you, and you get a whole bunch of hatchlings, some of them are normal, some of them are spot noses, and you really can't tell the difference between them. They're pretty much the tell 
telltale sign that you have a spot nose is that it has some kind of a pattern on the head. Sometimes the pattern on the head can vary, but usually it's a pretty strong pattern compared to like a normal ball python. You actually wouldn't see any kind of a pattern. It'd just be like a blackhead. So here's what happens if you work the spot nose into the leopard banana. Take a look at this. This is a pretty amazing combination. It seemed like, you know, the more I actually looked into this, it, it actually, as a matter of fact, I actually found one snake that was a, a leopard spot nose banana with the addition of pinstripe. And that thing was probably the craziest thing I've ever seen. I actually wanted to show you kind of how we can build the pinstripe into this mix. So take a look at this. This is actually the pinstripe. And I have to say the pinstripe is probably one of my favorite genes. It can be a really bright gold snake, probably one of the brightest ones you can get. And this is kind of a unique example of a pinstripe that I found over here. Usually they have a really strong stripe right down the top, but I'd say in most cases, the pinstripe has these little stripes that come down the side of the snake with these little, kind of like scrunched together alien heads with the two little eyes, and you really can't see it on this one. This is a really unique example, kind of an interesting pinstripe. I thought that was kind of neat, really just smoothed out, pretty awesome. Here's what happens if you work pinstripe into the leopard banana without the spot nose. Take a look at this. That is a pretty amazing combination. You can definitely see the influence of the pinstripe and the leopard and the banana. It just seems like it turns it into, it almost looks like, almost looks like a plastic snake or something like that. It doesn't even look real. It's pretty amazing. As a matter of fact, all these almost look like they're made of plastic. It's kind of crazy. So here's what happens if you actually work spot nose into this combination and the spot nose essentially works with the leopard and the pinstripe to really explode the pattern. Take a look at this thing. <laughs> that is one of the most amazing combinations and it's, it's pretty amazing. It's like every time I look over here on Morph Market, people are making more and more stuff that just kind of blow me away. It's kind of crazy. If you actually look at the prices on some of these, this one actually sold for $2,000, which is kind of crazy. And this one's actually listed as a female maker. So if you actually took this, so, so keep in mind the male makers and the female makers are only associated with the males. So if you actually have a female banana, it's not a male maker or a, or, or a female maker. The bananas pretty much make 50-50 males and females, which is kind of a weird analogy. It's only a weird thing with the bananas and corglows and only with the males. It's, it's, it's kind of a weird anomaly. So this one's a female maker. So if you actually took this, Spread it to something else, all the banana offspring would be females, which is kind of interesting. So take a look at this. This is a really interesting effect when you work lesser into the banana leopard. It's, it's kind of a crazy mix. So the lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. And if you actually took a lesser and bred it to another lesser, 25% of the time you get an all-white snake with blue eyes. And if you actually took the lesser and bred it to anything else in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, you'd actually get an all-white snake. Versus if you're working with Mojave, sometimes you can get like the purple passions or the mystic potions that are kind of a purplish colored snake instead of a bright white snake. So here's what happens if you actually take the lesser and work it into the banana leopard. Take a look at this. This is kind of an interesting fact. And you'll notice uh, kind of right off that it's like a stripe. You get like three stripes right down the back of the snake. And essentially what that's from is that's the combination of the leopard and the lesser. It's, it's a weird anomaly when you work leopard and lesser. Maybe about 50% of the time I've actually seen. It doesn't always happen. And sometimes you get really strong stripes and sometimes you kind of get a jumbled up pattern. But I'd say most times if you mix lesser and leopard together, you end up with a striped snake, which is kind of weird. The lesser is also pretty much the same thing as a butter. They're really close. The butter leopard also makes striped snakes. Now, let me tell you, if you actually have a banana and a leopard, I would definitely breed them together. If you're actually into breeding snakes, make some of the coolest combinations that I've seen over here. So here is the spider, and the spider is actually, it actually gets its name for the spider web pattern that comes right down the top of the snake. It's a pretty interesting gene, really visually stunning, just one single gene. It's actually dominant. You actually, if you're actually working with the spider, a lot of people caution against breeding two snakes together that contain the spider gene, because a lot of people say that if you actually make the super spider, it's a lethal combination, or it can have some severe head wobble. So if you're working with the spider, I'd 
probably avoid breeding it to another spider at all costs. Probably, you know, I've actually seen some people make, you know, claim to make a super spider. I haven't actually seen one, but this is, 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 it's kind of an interesting omelet. I've actually seen some people that claim to have made a super spider and they died in the egg right before hatching, and it was just kind of an interesting. They actually cut the eggs open and kind of showed you what was inside for the super spiders, which is kind of unfortunate. You know, a lot of people kind of shy away from the spiders just because you can't make a super and you can't breed it to another spider. So here's what happens if you work spider into the banana leopard. Take a look at this. This is another house. <laughs> looks like another plastic snake. Pretty amazing. And I love how really clean and bright these are and like a really solid yellow color. And you can definitely tell the spider is in there kind of from this pattern coming right down the top, almost like a reduced spider web pattern. And usually with the spiders, you can tell it has a really crazy head stamp on a lot of your spiders. Pretty amazing combination. So here's the pastel. The pastel is pretty interesting because it's also a pattern enhancing gene. It also jumbles up the patterns. And some pastels can be a little bit variable. If you actually uh, if you actually uh, look at a whole bunch of different pastels, some can be kind of kind of browned out, and some can be really super bright yellow. Really depends on the line of pastel. And kind of the hard thing is I actually produced some pastel coral glows before, and I could not for the life of me tell that the pastel is in the mix. It doesn't really have a strong effect if you just work pastel into the core goal, but it seems like the pastel really interacts with the leopard to explode the pattern even more. Here's what happens if you take the pastel and work it into the banana leopard. Take a look at this crazy snake. That is pretty crazy. And you definitely see the pastel kind of fades it out a little and kind of fades the head a little bit and definitely jumbles up the pattern even more than just the leopard would in this case. A lot of times the pastel Pastels can bring out a little bit more brighter of a yellow, but I found with my core glows it didn't have much of an effect at all. I think this is really mainly the influence of the pastel with the leopard. So here is the Enchi, and the Enchi is essentially considered to be a pattern reducing gene. And I have to say, this is probably the best looking Enchi I have ever seen. You know, sometimes you can make some tiger stripes with an Enchi, but I've never seen one like this. This is really crazy. Take a look at this one. It has really awesome. As a matter of fact, if this one was still for sale, actually it might be still for sale. It's only $75. That is probably the best. Uh, probably the best Enchi I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, I might buy this before this actually publishes over on YouTube. That is awesome. And sometimes it's kind of good to buy single genes instead of multiple genes because then you know you have a really high-end example of that gene working it into your collection versus if you actually bought like a combination and then you breed it to something else. Sometimes, you know, you can produce, like I've actually done before, you know, kind of breed out the pastels and find out it's kind of a browned out version of pastel that's in your collection versus if you got a really bright pastel and bred it into your collection then you know exactly that it's actually a high quality line of that particular gene. So this is I'd say this is probably the best one I've ever seen. So here's what happens if you actually work Enchi into the banana leopard. Take a look at this. So this is pretty interesting. So the Enchi actually really reduces the pattern and a lot of times the Enchis can really bring out a lot of orange in your combinations. So look at this thing this thing is so bright it's pretty amazing and it's pretty amazing the different lines of Enchi. I've actually seen some Enchis that didn't really reduce the pattern that much and I've actually seen some Enchis that really don't bring out a lot of orange so to get something this orange and to really reduce the pattern is pretty amazing in this combination. So here is the clown, and, and kind of the interesting thing is when I first started in ball pythons about five years ago, uh, everyone was going crazy over these clowns, and I looked at them, I'm like, that's really not that impressive as a standalone gene. This is actually recessive, so you need two copies of the gene, and as a standalone gene, I'd say it doesn't really look that impressive. You don't really know the ultimate potential of the clown until you start mixing other things into the clown, and that's where it really shines. It can really make some of the craziest combinations. Here's what 
happens if you work the banana leopard into the clown? Take a look at this crazy snake. And I'd say when you work in banana into the clown, banana with anything makes a really impressive combination. Then you work in leopard and it really explodes the pattern. And sometimes these clowns can be pretty variable. You can see, you know, different patterns from one version of the same genes to another version. So this is one version of the banana leopard clown. This one's also a female maker, which is kind of unusual. It seems like most of the bananas over here that I've actually seen are typically male makers. So this is kind of unusual. So here's the last one I want to show you. This is pretty amazing. This is actually the champagne. And I say the champagne's probably one of the most challenging genes to work with because a lot of times when you work other genes into the champagne, you end up with an almost patternless snake or just a little bit of pattern from the champagne that completely dominates the pattern of what you're trying to work into it. There's a couple things you can make with the champagne. Probably the best is the gray matter with the champagne and the super cinnamon. Those are pretty awesome. Here's what happens if you you take champagne and work in the banana and the leopard. Take a look at this. This was really shocking. <laughs> I could not believe that the banana leopard combination would even break through the champagne and give you a really amazing combination. Almost everything I looked at with the banana leopard broke through it and really transformed it into a really crazy snake. It's pretty amazing you actually see so much contrast and color and definition and pattern working this into a champagne. This also has yellow belly in the mix and yellow belly usually when you're working into combinations like this it'll brighten it up a little bit make it a little bit more yellow to uh, really enhance it even more. That is a pretty amazing combination. All right so it is time for the question of the day and Mac Daddy 97 asks can I feed baby chickens to my ball pythons? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, if you actually look at some of these online places that sell rats and mice, they also sell other exotic food items. Like sometimes they'll actually sell chickens and pigs and rabbits and a whole bunch of stuff. And you may be tempted to buy some chickens for your ball python. I've actually seen some people do that. And kind of the interesting thing, I've kind of heard through the grapevine that since chickens have hollow bones, the inside of their bones are hollow and they weigh a lot less than other animals that they are lacking in calcium. I've actually seen a lot of people feed birds to their snakes and they supplement with calcium, kind of sprinkle a little bit of calcium on the bird before you feed it to your snake. Although kind of on the flip side, if you actually look at some of the reticulated pythons in the wild that live on a lot of these islands in the middle of the ocean, a lot of times their diet, it consists mainly of birds. So I'm not sure how true that it is that you can't feed a snake 100% birds in in some cases but kind of to be on the safe side I'd probably stick with rats and mice you know it gets pretty much the industry standard and I know for sure that it's hundred percent nutritionally complete so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video